The Harvard study of adult development has established a strong correlation between deep relationships and well-being. The question is, how does a person nurture those deep relationships? This book is all about that. A Summary of the Good Life Lessons from the World's Longest Scientific Study of Happiness by Dr. Robert Waldinger, M.D. and Mark Schultz, Ph.D. The Harvard study of adult development has followed the lives of two generations of individuals from the same families for more than 80 years. Shepherding a study like this requires tremendous trust. Chapter 1. What Makes a Good Life The authors begin by explaining that human relationships are crucial for health and happiness. Good relationships keep us healthier and happier, according to decades of research, including the 84-year-long Harvard study of adult development. This longitudinal study has followed hundreds of people's entire lives to understand what factors contribute most to human flourishing. The study was started in 1938 with two separate groups, 268 Harvard sophomores and 456 disadvantaged teens from Boston's poorest neighborhoods. They have been studied ever since through questionnaires, medical records, and in-person interviews. The study has found that good relationships are the single most important factor for well-being more than money, fame, or success. Other major longitudinal studies have replicated these findings, showing that people with more social connections and social support are mentally and physically healthier into old age compared to those who are more isolated. But it's the quality, not quantity, of relationships that matters. You can feel lonely even when surrounded by others if the relationships lack warmth and intimacy. The authors explain that a good life means more than temporary pleasure or happiness. It refers to the ancient Greek idea of eudaimonia, a sense of meaning, purpose, and enduring well-being. The book focuses on how to achieve this type of lifelong flourishing. The authors note that science has only recently caught up to the wisdom from philosophers and religions over millennia, that relationships are key to human thriving. Some may wonder if it's too late to improve their lives and relationships. The authors explain this pessimism is misguided. A change is always possible, and even small steps to be more connected can make a big difference. Our childhoods shape us but don't define our fate. The ways we cope with life can evolve across adulthood. The book shares specific insights that may be of help to you from the Harvard study and other research about how to navigate all types of relationships for greater health and happiness. From choosing a life partner wisely to dealing with family challenges to deepening friendships. The stories of real participants in the study over decades illustrate how these principles play out in actual lives over time. Robert Waldinger, MD, and Mark Schultz, PhD, aim to make the study's lessons practical and accessible to everyone, so that the wisdom gained from nearly a century of research can spread beyond academia and improve people's daily lives. The good life is within reach by making relationships a priority. Chapter 2. Why Relationships Matter The Harvard study of adult development has revealed that positive relationships are the key to human happiness and well-being. Through an ongoing study of people's lives over decades, research has consistently shown that individuals who have more and higher quality social connections live longer, experience better physical health, and report higher life satisfaction. Relationships provide daily meaning, purpose, and joy. They are the very engine of a good life. Yet modern culture often directs our attention elsewhere, toward money, status, and achievement. There is an assumption that these things will make us happy, but scientific research demonstrates that they provide only a temporary boost to mood and satisfaction. Once basic needs are reliably met, having more money does not significantly improve emotional well-being. Lasting happiness arises from the web of personal relationships we nurture. Our brains have evolved over millennia to seek safety through social bonds. But in the complexity of modern life, we struggle to build strong relationships and communities. We underestimate the messiness yet overestimate the solitude benefits of being alone. We take our existing relationships for granted and focus intensely on more tangible rewards like making money and acquiring status symbols. But these kinds of rewards only provide momentary pleasure signals in the brain, while good relationships require consistent nurturing but provide enduring emotional sustenance. While life circumstances and demographics certainly influence well-being, research consistently shows that strong social connections improve health and happiness for diverse individuals across lines of gender, ethnicity, geography, and more. With attention and effort, people have the power to cultivate happiness through relationships, despite whatever disadvantages they face. Even genetically inherited personality traits only account for about 50% of an individual's happiness variation. Our choices still matter. 
By strengthening our social bonds with others, we build the engine of a good life. Relationships are ends in themselves, not just means to otherwise isolated goals. They require continuous effort, but provide deep meaning and fulfillment. To steer ourselves toward happiness, we must first understand where we are now. Then through small but consistent actions to improve our most important connections, we orient our lives toward lasting fulfillment. The rewards of material attainment provide only short-lived satisfaction, but the lived experience of relating to others is the very substance of happiness. By nurturing our social relationships with ongoing care and vulnerability, we craft lives brimming with significance. Chapter 3. Relationships on the Winding Road of Life The winding road of life has predictable patterns and unexpected twists. Understanding the typical stages of life can provide perspective on our own experience and compassion for others. Longitudinal research, like the decades-long Harvard study, tracks people's entire lives to see how events unfold and which factors affect health and happiness over time. Mapping an individual's life path shows how one thing leads to another in ways that might not be obvious at the moment. Lives have unique details but also recurring themes. Seeing the big picture helps us empathize with loved ones, their frustrations and struggles may reflect the developmental stage they are in. Adolescence age 12 to 19 involves intense identity exploration and new kinds of relationships. Young adulthood aged from 20 to 40 means pursuing intimacy and work. Midlife aged 41 to 65 brings generativity, moving beyond the self. In late life aged 66 plus, time itself becomes most precious. Relationships are central in navigating all stages. Teens need adult guidance even as they become more independent. Young adults should balance self-sufficiency with close friendships. Midlife adults often feel overwhelmed, but investing in others brings renewed purpose. Older adults focus on meaningful connections as time grows short. Still, unexpected events often shape lives powerfully. Tragedies and chance encounters redirect our path. But good relationships increase beneficial chaos. Childhoods don't define fate. Coping skills can evolve across adulthood. It's never too late to improve relationships and find happiness. Locating yourself and loved ones on the lifespan roadmap fosters understanding and reveals how priorities differ across life stages. This perspective helps us support others through challenges ahead. It shows that change is possible at any age if we invest in relationships. The winding road feels less lonely with companions. Chapter 4. Social Fitness, Keeping Your Relationships in Good Shape The Harvard study of adult development began by studying physical wounds, specifically how stress affects wound healing. Researchers performed minor skin biopsies on caregivers of loved ones with dementia and on non-caregivers of the same age. The caregivers' wounds took 50% longer to heal due to the stress of losing important relationships in their lives through the slow erasure of a loved one's personality. This illustrates the deep connection between relationships and physical health. We are inherently social creatures, yet modern life often isolates us. Loneliness is now recognized as a public health epidemic. It makes us more sensitive to physical pain, weakens the immune system, reduces brain function, disrupts sleep, and is as unhealthy as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Strengthening our social fitness is crucial for well-being. Assessing our social universe involves listing our closest friends and relatives, mapping them on a grid of how energizing versus depleting each relationship is, and how frequently we interact and in identifying any gaps in emotional support. This highlights opportunities to nourish relationships. Key types of support include safety, security, learning, growth, emotional closeness, confiding, identity affirmation, romantic intimacy, practical help, and fun. Relaxation. Reviewing whether we receive and provide each type of support brings our social world into focus. To improve our social fitness, focus first on appreciating and solidifying positive relationships. Next, nudge more neutral relationships in a positive direction through generosity, curiosity, and understanding. Even difficult relationships present opportunities for growth. Generosity involves giving the types of support we wish to receive. Helping others benefits ourselves. Curiosity means asking questions and listening to understand others' experiences. Communicating this understanding back is thrilling and connects us. Keeping relationships energizing requires practicing new patterns of relating. Regular check-ins on our social universe over time help us cherish relationships and make needed improvements. In the Harvard study, even participants who were reluctant to examine their relationships revealed much about their social needs when asked thoughtful questions. Reflecting on our web of connections is an investment in our future well-being. 
The eight key ideas in Chapter 4 are 1. Relationships profoundly impact physical health, as shown by research on wound healing. 2. Loneliness is an epidemic that harms well-being in multiple ways. Strengthening social fitness is vital. 3. Assessing our social universe involves mapping relationships on a grid of quality and frequency. 4. Identifying gaps in emotional support types like safety, growth, confiding, and so forth illuminates opportunities. 5. Improving social fitness means appreciating positive relationships first, then nudging neutral ones. 6. Generosity, curiosity, and communicating understanding help energize relationships. 7. Regular check-ins on our social universe over time nourish relationships. 8. Reflecting on connections, even reluctantly, is an investment in future well-being. Chapter 5. Attention to Relationships. Your Best Investment. Our time and attention are life's most precious resources. How we invest them shapes happiness more than we realize. Modern life scatters attention constantly via technology and overstimulation. This leaves less for nurturing relationships, our main source of health and meaning. Staying focused takes effort now. Our brains evolved for sustained attention like owls, but today's environment treats them like hummingbirds. Frequent task switching has cognitive costs. Continuous partial attention is an anxious, depleted mode. The quality of awareness matters, not just time spent. Mindfulness counteracts distraction. It means paying purposeful attention without judgment to the present. Even brief moments of alertness to sensations, people, and beauty deepen life. We notice more by asking, what's here that's new? Presence and focus make action possible. With loved ones, attention means interest and effort to understand their experience. Empathic listening relieves loneliness and builds bonds. Curiosity about others' perspectives invigorates both people. Misunderstandings still happen, but trying to understand conveys caring. Regular social check-ins maintain long-term fitness. Reflection reveals relationships needing more time or attention. Begin with what already energizes you. Schedule tech-free periods to be fully present. Small investments compound over years into vitality. Despite busyness, attending to those who matter most is in our control. We choose whether to be swept along or steer purposefully. Noticing life's richness now brings meaning. The good life is created by how we spend each moment. It's never too late to focus on what and who deserves our attention. Chapter 6. Facing the Music, Adapting to Challenges in Your Relationships Relationships are central to navigating life's challenges, both big and small. Research from the Harvard study shows that our closest relationships can bring the greatest joy, but also cause the deepest hurt. This paradox means we need to practice adaptability and compassion in our relationships, facing difficulties openly while avoiding knee-jerk reactions. The Harvard study reveals that participants who tended to avoid or ignore problems in midlife had poorer memory and lower life satisfaction in old age compared to those who addressed difficulties directly. Facing challenges requires moving from reflexive reactions to more thoughtful, considered responses, taking things one moment at a time. The WICR model outlines five stages for skillfully responding to emotional situations. 1. Watch. Observe the full context, including others' perspectives and your own reactions. Applying curiosity expands your view beyond initial impressions. 2. Interpret, make sense of what's at stake for you and others in the situation. Ask yourself why you feel strongly to identify underlying goals or insecurities. Avoid making assumptions. 3. Select, clarify your desired outcomes, then carefully weigh options and available resources. Consider the pros, cons, and likelihood of success for each response. Reflect on your own strengths and weaknesses. 4. Engage. Mindfully implement your chosen response. Practice or get candid feedback to increase the chance of success. Be willing to adjust as needed. 5. Reflect. Learn from the experience. Evaluate objectively what went well or poorly. Gain insights to inform how you respond next time. Chronic relationship problems can create a stubborn sense of stuckness. Examining your own patterns, getting an outside perspective from someone you trust and approaching each situation with beginner's mind can reveal possibilities you're unable to see. Relationships build resilience in the face of crisis. The Harvard study men relied heavily on the bonds they formed with each other during pivotal periods like the Great Depression and World War II. During the COVID-19 pandemic, meaningful human connections remained vital to well-being and mental health. In both global catastrophes and personal challenges, relationships anchor us. Facing the music requires accepting the risks inherent to intimacy. With compassion and adaptability, 
We can manage life's turbulent waves, riding them skillfully rather than feeling helpless. Each small effort to understand others and connect authentically plants seeds for greater health and fulfillment. Though human relationships are complex, they remain central to health and happiness. The Harvard study illuminates that our closest ties bring not only great joy, but also deep hurt. This paradox means we must practice flexibility, engage challenges with care, and choose thoughtfulness over reflexive reactions. If we can accept the risks of intimacy and approach relationships with wisdom, we gain resilience to navigate both global crises and personal troubles, emerging stronger. Chapter 7. The Person Beside You How Intimate Relationships Shape Our Lives This chapter explores how intimate relationships shape our lives. Intimate connections, beginning with attachments in infancy, are essential for human development and well-being across the lifespan. Intimate Attachment The Strange Situation Attachment theory proposes that infants form an emotional bond with primary caregivers. In infancy, close physical and emotional connections provide comfort and a secure base from which to explore. Attachment styles in childhood predict relationship patterns in adulthood. Securely attached infants seek contact when caregivers return, are soothed, and can return to play. Anxious infants seek contact but are not easily soothed. Avoidant infants do not openly express distress and may turn away when caregivers return. In adult relationships, secure attachment provides a refuge from stress. Anxiety and avoidance in adult attachments often stem from fears of being dependent or driving others away. Mutual vulnerability strengthens attachment security. Empathy and affection build relationship bonds, nurturing a bedrock of empathy and affection. Observing and accurately interpreting emotions in couple interactions predicts later relationship stability. Expressions of empathy and affection are especially important. Empathy shows interest in a partner's feelings. Affection provides relationship warmth. This emotional bedrock helps couples weather challenges. A fear of differences. Relationship conflicts often result from differences between partners. Judging a partner's differences as deficiencies can damage relationships. Disagreements present opportunities to understand each partner's vulnerabilities and needs. Reflective listening and trying to understand a partner's perspective can resolve conflicts. Mutual understanding relieves stress and brings partners closer. The Enduring Influence of Intimate Partnerships Satisfaction in intimate relationships fluctuates across the lifespan. Having children often decreases couple satisfaction. When children leave home, couples often experience an empty nest boost in satisfaction. In old age, secure attachment to a partner benefits well-being and health. Relationships requiring high levels of intimacy and companionship carry heavy expectations today. Partners alone cannot fulfill every need. Maintaining other interests and relationships prevents overburdening intimate partnerships. Though intimate relationships take diverse forms, human needs for closeness persist. Facing challenges together, with empathy, affection, and understanding, allows partners to gain strength from their union and live more fully. Chapter 8. Family Matters Call it a clan, call it a network, call it a tribe, call it a family, whoever you are you need one. Families are important. They shape who we become as adults. Researchers studied families in Hawaii starting when the children were born in 1955. They followed them for over 30 years. They found that children who had difficult childhoods were more likely to have problems as adults. But some children did well even with tough childhoods. One reason was having at least one caring adult in their life. The Harvard study has followed families for many decades. Researchers visited participants' homes when they were kids. They rated how warm and supportive their families were. Many years later, when participants were elderly, researchers interviewed them about their marriages. Men who had closer families as boys were more likely to have good marriages as old men. Early life affects us but does not doom us. Later experiences can change us too. Finding the right partner can help correct bad assumptions from childhood. So can therapy. We can open ourselves up to new, positive experiences at any age. Neil McCarthy had a very positive childhood at first. His parents were kind and loving. But when Neil was a teenager, his mother started drinking too much. His parents fought violently. The happy home fell apart. Neil left home at 19 to join the army. Later, he met his wife, Gail. He worked hard to give his own kids a stable home, unlike his turbulent teens. But one daughter, Lucy, struggled with depression and addiction. Neil and Gail gave her support and space to work through her challenges. Neil wondered if he was to blame, but no parent can control how their child turns out. 
He focused on giving Lucy love. All families have ups and downs. Roles change as we age. Keeping bonds strong takes effort. Little arguments can drift into big distance. Regular contact helps. Special events, meals, calls. Social media can connect far-flung families. In person is best. Ask questions and share stories to learn family history. There is treasure in every member's memory. The most important thing is to face problems with flexibility, not avoidance. Don't let the past trap you. Stay open to surprises from family. The time we have together is limited. Make the most of it with care. Chapter 9. The Good Life at Work. Investing in Connections. The Harvard study on adult development found that positive relationships at work are crucial for happiness and fulfillment, regardless of the type of job. Many participants who held prestigious high-paying jobs were unhappy, while others with blue-collar jobs found great satisfaction through connections with co-workers. Work occupies a major portion of most people's lives. In the United Kingdom, the average person will spend 13 years at work by age 80, compared to 9,500 hours with a partner. We often view work as separate from real life, struggling to balance the two. But work relationships significantly impact our well-being and home life. Difficult workdays lead to negative emotions that spill over into personal relationships. One study found rough workdays linked to more anger in women and emotional withdrawal in men at home. We may think we leave work at work, but emotions carry over unconsciously. Acknowledging feelings without judgment, rather than ignoring or suppressing them, can alleviate this spillover effect. At work, loneliness from lack of connection raises mortality risk as much as smoking. Solitary jobs like driving trucks heighten isolation, but even social jobs can be lonely without meaningful co-worker relationships. People with a close friend at work have higher engagement. We must sometimes intentionally cultivate connections to maximize well-being. Mentor relationships allow sharing wisdom and enjoying others' energy. Mentoring provides the satisfaction of being generative, which makes work more rewarding. Power imbalances can corrupt relationships, but avoiding connections also leads to loneliness. Facing difficulties directly may preserve valuable ties. Major work transitions require reassessing effects on relationships. Upon retirement, replaced social connections provide new sources of meaning and purpose. Staying engaged counters the loss of mattering that comes with leaving work. Technology is changing work's social nature through remote work, automation, artificial intelligence, and always-on expectations. The impact on mental health and relationships needs consideration. In-person interactions lost to remote work may profoundly affect well-being despite conveniences. To thrive amidst workplace changes, we must tend to our core relationships. Subtle social currents that support well-being are easily overshadowed. We must consciously elevate and care for them, asking questions like, who do I appreciate at work? What connections am I missing? How can I enrich my daily work experiences through relationships? Seeing work as part of life, not separate from it, allows us to benefit from the social opportunities it provides. Many happy study participants had positive work relationships and balanced their work and home lives, though it took effort. They understood it was all connected. We don't leave our lives at the office door. Every workday presents chances to enrich life through relationships. Chapter 10. All friends have benefits. Friends are one of the most important relationships in our lives. They provide companionship, support, and joy. Aristotle said that without friends, no one would choose to live. Research shows that good friendships improve our health and help us live longer. Friends reduce stress and help us cope during difficult times. The Harvard study found that men who had strong bonds with fellow soldiers during war were less likely to develop PTSD. Friendships change throughout our lives as we move through different stages. Adolescents make intense friendships built on sharing feelings and secrets. New parents connect over the challenges of raising children. Retirees often lose touch with work friends and have to actively rebuild their social circles. We need different types of friends at different times. Casual friendships are also beneficial. Brief, friendly interactions with strangers or acquaintances give us small mood boosts throughout the day. These weak ties also connect us to more diverse social networks and information. However, friendships take effort. As we get busier, maintaining them falls lower on our priority list. But neglecting friends leads to loneliness later in life. Both men and women in the study expressed regret over letting their friendships lapse. To maintain strong friendships, be curious about your friends' lives, listen to them, and share intimate thoughts. Repair rifts when you can. Develop new shared interests to avoid stagnation. Casual ties matter too. Greet your mail carrier or chat with the barista. These brief uplifts accumulate. 
and it's never too late to expand your social circle. Andrew Deering, one of the most isolated men in the study, made his first real friends at age 68 by joining a health club. Within months, he went from having no social life to seeing friends daily. He rediscovered joy, even though he still felt lonely at times. As long as we're alive, it's not too late to reach out. Conclusion, it's never too late to be happy. The Harvard study has followed participants for over 80 years, providing insights into what makes for a happy and fulfilling life. Two participants, Henry Keane and Leo DeMarco, joined the study as teenagers in the 1940s and grew into engaged, healthy older men with positive outlooks. Another participant, John Marsden's pseudonym, despite privileges like wealth and education, developed a tendency toward negativity and had trouble connecting with others. The study shows it's never too late to make positive changes no matter your age or circumstances. Simply reflecting on your life and asking honest questions about yourself is an important first step. Being part of something bigger, like the study, gave participants' lives meaning. We all want to feel that we matter. Rather than focusing on personal achievements, think about what you mean to others. This is how to leave a lasting mark. Good relationships keep us happier, healthier, and help us live longer. This has proven true across cultures. Because human beings are inherently social, nurturing relationships should be considered a core component of health education. During crises like the pandemic, Connecting with others became even more crucial for well-being. To move toward a good life, recognize it's the journey itself and the people walking it with you that matter most. Make thoughtful connections with family, friends, co-workers, and even strangers. Show appreciation to important people in your life while you have the chance. A good life emerges from learning to love and accept love from others. Please give this video a thumbs up so that we can spread this information to others who share our same interests or circumstances. Be a helper. There you have it. Take care of yourself and your health. Please subscribe to my channel Culinary Physics if you haven't subscribed yet and let's grow together as a community. Thanks for watching to the end and I'll see you in the next video.